everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, checking in with an extra special garden tour. Today I am joined by some of my best friends in the whole world. This is Stacy. We grew up next to one another in Michigan since we were six. Yes. This is Hayden. Hello. And this is Shoshin Hi. down here with Mr. Reginald. And we are going to have a Lion King moment. Lion <laughs> King. We are going to take you around the garden. This is like, what, the last part of, the last week of, of July. I can't believe how fast the summer is going. So, um, get ready to see because everything has grown so much. We've had massive storms every single night. In fact, Hayden, it's going to be your job to find the rain gauge and show everybody how much rain we got. Because not only did we get a ton of rain, but we've had two nights of power outages to go along with it. <laughs> so that's a little over half an inch. That's from last night. And the night before we had an inch and a half. So that means in the last two days, two inches. And I would say, <laughs> these two cute little ones it's showing because look at how big the zucchini plants are and you see there's tiny zucchinis starting to form little babies and eggplants are growing really well there's lots of peppers um the milkweed has started to bloom but we still haven't had any monarchs which is a shame but we have lots of swallowtails. What do you think of those snapdragons? Uh, I'll think of the snap. They snap, those are seedlings. And I really like that one that you were just touching because you see it's two colors. I know. So I want to collect I the seed from that. I saw a bug on it. So I just and see, this is the seed and this seed is ripe. So I need to gather the seed. You know, I'm a seed collector, yeah. hoarder sometimes is the right word. Mm -hmm. And then we'll grow them out and see if they also genetically come true. Cause I really like that pink and, and yellow together. Yeah, have you ever seen the red ones? Yes, there are some red ones somewhere in this garden. Yeah, the purple ones, white ones. And it's nice that the deer have been leaving the kufi alone. Um, we had a lot of deer damage early in the season. Um, and I haven't been spraying because uh, well, we've been getting rain, and prior to that, I was too sick with COVID <laughs> to do anything. I'm still coughing, everybody, but I'm feeling much better. So I'm in almost four weeks since getting sick. It's, this is this is not a cold. I'm just gonna keep saying that. So look at these grapes. You all know I don't like southern grapes because I think they taste weird. But these are actually champagne grapes, mm -hmm. and I think they're ripe. Right? At this stage. Can I eat one? Yes. Here, you want this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they're one. seedless. Here you go. Stacy, you and I can grab some. Okay. Um, they kind of taste funny in your mouth. Do they taste funny? Yeah. They might not be completely right. I'll come over with you. I've... So these are the tomatoes that got planted really late. And you can see we're still getting blight. It, it starts like this. See? It looks all off colored and and wilty and that plant is gonna die and that is this plant here so no point in even keeping it in we'll pull that out here's another one that died and this this is uh, is manifested because of rain so it's like you know i'm so grateful to get the rain but these high maintenance tomatoes don't appreciate it uh, it's really well, we tomatoes are so annoying we got one baby tomato one baby tomato and that plant is dying so we'll pull that off and it'll ripen inside. Well, this side of the greenhouse is doing great. And that Asian percubit that my friend Dewey gave me is finally taking off on the greenhouse. And we've got some awesome little, actually these are ready to be harvested. Yeah. These really eggplants. Um, Red peppers or are those eggplants? I'm not sure. Eggplants. Uh, those are red peppers. What? Yeah, look at They're not quite, they'll turn really bright red. And they are not a hot pepper because I don't, I don't digest hot peppers, peppers well. I don't 
and we've got lots of tomatoes doing well. You can see this is different than blight, but it's another type of disease that's causing the yellowing of the leaves. Um, you gotta really, <laughs> you just can't get your feelings hurt with tomatoes. It's, I'm so glad we're not doing the tomato tasting this year. Oh my gosh, it was so much stress to watch the tomatoes die leading up to that party that revolved around a plant that I can no longer grow. Temperamental. Temperamental, they're high maintenance. It's great to see nothing wilting. It has been a relatively dry summer, but because of the recent thunderstorms, which has definitely made early evenings challenging. It's pretty much consistent at five o'clock, the sky turns black. Um, here's an awesome spider. I know you guys may not be spider people, but these are the writing spiders or the banana spiders. Yeah, they're good. They'll they are really with... good. They don't yeah. bite. But they, they, they could if they, they really need to. Um, oh, I'm getting, I'm messing up its web. There we go. You can see how big they get. I can get that to focus. They can get to the size of half a dollar bill. And see, when they feel threatened, they do that so that you actually notice them and then you don't walk through their web. So we have a lot. We have a lot of these in the garden and they get bigger and bigger all through the fall. Yeah, we used to have one in our backyard. So this bed up here is what the, the summer camp planted, um, what, two, almost two weeks ago. And there is so much stuff germinating. This is where I kind of, I was, I was like still sick, but not testing positive and just kind of gave these teenagers like 50 packets of seed and was like, just sow it. And so it's going to be a riot of, of randomness, but there's lots of okra. We did 10 varieties of okra and there are, these are cosmos right here. This is buckwheat. These are zucchinis. The grass stuff is, um, sorghum and of course sweet potatoes. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm, oh, I hopefully, I'm not sure what's germinating back there, but that looks good. I'm hoping there will be some zinnias. Oh, I see zinnias in the back. Let me walk in here and show you guys. So I'm not quite sure what this one is, but this is zinnia here. And I see lots of okra. I love okra, so hopefully we weren't too late in getting this planted because I really want to be able to harvest okra. It's one of my favorite summer vegetables. <laughs> now, will this area be an example of the cottage gardening that you were telling me about earlier? Exactly. I found that cottage gardening is easiest by direct seeding. Wonderful. And that that's precisely what we did here. Wonderful. So the kids tossed out the seeds in sort of random order and then we mulched once the seeds were sown and then the seeds germinate right up through the mulch. Wow. How long do you have to wait after putting the seeds down to put the mulch down? We did it immediately. Mm -hmm. okay. And because these are summer crops, they germinated in like three days. Oh my goodness. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they will be in full bloom for the fall open garden, mm -hmm. which is Saturday. September 24th from noon to 4 p.m. So this is the border that Savannah and I planted last Tuesday, so it hasn't even been a week. And I'm very excited to see, those are sunflowers germinating there and of course more castor beans. We left the zinnias that it's self-sown and they're doing great. We left some castor beans along the edge because that helps deter the animals. Look, there was a swallowtail. Maybe it'll come back around. So we sowed a lot of seed. We did sorghum and sunflowers and sesame and zinnias and marigolds. And it looks like, I think this is all sesame right now that's germinating. So it'll be exciting to see how this border turns out. 
again, really late, but better late than never, right? And then the wind is out yard is track So Shoshin's just saying he's been seeing hummingbirds here, which I'm very happy about. And they've been eating blueberries. I'm still really concerned about the blueberries here. I've sent in a soil sample to try and get some specific instructions if I can save this. Um, well, yeah, they are dying, but like... Yeah, you see that inner venal chlorosis is manifesting as an iron deficiency. But I think it's because the pH has gotten too high. At least this one's not bad. There you go. You can eat that. I mean, the blueberries are fine. They're just not as big as they usually are. Yeah. Oh, and what was that flash? Was that a little Reginald flash? He's like, I'm here. So all the containers here in the fire pit look great. The black mudras rice is really appreciating the heat and humidity and extra water. And, you know, obviously these pepper plants are doing well. We've got a huge eggplant that needs to be harvested today. Got to be harvested today, but we need clippers to do it. Clippers? I got my pocket knife. Will that work? Uh, maybe. You want to try? I could cut it with my pocket knife, probably. Yeah. I cut it with, with your pocket knife. I have both my pocket knives. Or I could probably just tear it off. <laughs> well, that might break the stem. And you see, it'll keep growing. So that's why it's best with eggplants not to rip them off, but to cut them off. And Reggie is just such a cute little garden cat. When in doubt, he runs to comfortable furniture. I had all the good ones yesterday. <laughs> so in this bed, you can see the swallowtail caterpillars have been really busy eating. We have a few to locate, relocate from the driveway dill oh, down to this parsley because that one has lots to munch on still. I saw a dead, like, camo slug over here. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good because I don't like those slugs. And these zucchini plants are doing really well. And, oh, I see some peppers that need to be harvested. harvested. See these, once they get expanded like that, yeah. they need to go inside. And the gherkin, sour gherkins, continue to grow. And you can see they're setting their little fruits. And oh yeah, we've got lots of cucumbers coming. So oh. it'll soon be pickle season. I love cucumbers. You wanna take this one? Yeah, I can tear that off. There you go. And the sweet potatoes at the base are doing well. All these cucumbers and tomatoes are growing out of the tower garden, which is an aeroponic right system. Now I'm rubbing all the spikes off. <laughs> and yeah, everything is, it's been nice to not have to run irrigation, not run sprinklers. We've got one random gladiolus in flower here. I'm sure this one came from Aldi. <laughs> and some dahlias in bloom. And of course, one nice tall sunflower that's completely covered in bees. Too much. So as we round to the north side, that Rudbeckia is splaying all over the place. But you know, that's okay. I've been using it as cut flowers for arrangements inside and the pollinators absolutely love it. And you can see finches are eating the seeds of the echinacea, which is super charming. And the phlox is doing so well. Lots of pollinators on it. I am so impressed with this front border. The buckwheat is crazy. It's so tall. It's actually taller than the sun credible sunflowers, which I was not expecting. Um, you can see this border, you know, was direct seeded just over a month ago. And now there is absolutely no area where you can see the ground. And that is precisely the goal with a cottage garden. And of course, the pollinator activity here is off the charts. I mean, what do you think? Have you ever seen this many things flying in one place? <laughs> Reginald, he also likes to play out here. He likes to jump in the buckwheat. <sighs> Everything is a jungle when you're this tiny. 
And you can see some of the castor beans are coming up and some of the large sunflowers are growing. And that sun credible is so awesome. And the sesame back there is filling in. Um, I don't really see any flowers yet, but I'm sure it'll be blooming really soon. So this is just a sort of a riot of insect activity. So these tomato pots are doing really well. You can see they're like oh, all the way up. Some baby ones. That's right. They are slowly ripening and the wall looks great. The recent storms, last night's storm, knocked over more of this coleus. So we're gonna go ahead and move this pot to a less visible place. I'm actually gonna move the black mudras into its spot. And there are still a few swallowtail caterpillars eating this dill. And this is what I think will move these caterpillars to the parsley. See, here's some really tiny ones. Um, so that they have better food source because the, the dill is definitely finished. It's gone to seed. And I've been collecting the seeds and, and spreading them around the garden. So we are just relocating these swallowtails that were on the dill. And actually, let's take them to the fennel. Because they love to eat fennel and they haven't, they haven't seen the fennel plants yet. So you see, here is fennel. And you see, it kind of looks like the dill... It has these big flowers and then ferny foliage. But for some reason, the swallowtails haven't discovered it. So we're gonna, we're gonna show them. So basically all you're gonna do is set that, that leaf right in. You don't have to take the, you can just drop the leaf. Yeah, exactly. I can't find Reggie. And that way, he's inside. Oh. That way they will just move from the dill right onto the fennel. So this one has three swallowtails on it. Exactly. This way they won't run out of food and the fennel will finally have a purpose. <laughs> those are ready to be harvested. Right now? Yeah, those are blueberries. We'll get a bowl. That way it'll be easier to I harvest. I put them in my pocket right now. Well, you could put them in your pocket. <laughs> Should I take them out? Yeah. Go for it. Well, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed today's garden tour. We are quickly getting into harvest mode because we're realizing a there's a lot to be harvested. And you know, that is the whole point of a foodscape. And while I've got awesome extra hands, they're put them to work. <laughs> well, be sure to tune in next week for another weekly garden tour as the garden continues to, you know, grow through the summer season. And I'm wishing you all the very best. Take care, everybody.